Leeds United are a football club with tremendous footballing history. From the 1960s to the 1990s, they were one of the biggest clubs in England. However, they were succumbed to financial issues in the early 2000s. It took them over 15 seasons to get themselves back promoted to the top of English football. Now they're back down in the second tier of England, but they have got some fantastic wonder kids under their ranks like San Francisco, Somerville, Archie Gray, Jorginho Ruta. So we're going to be rebuilding Leeds from the 1st of January with up-to-date results back to Premier League champions so strap yourselves in for this Leeds United rebuild. So Leeds are currently sitting in fourth place in the championship nine points off of automatic promotion so it's going to be a bit of a tough ask to get into that top two but we'll see what we can do. We are on the 1st of January so we have got a whole January chance window ahead of us which is of course absolutely fantastic and as you look through this Leeds squad there is a lot of top class players here that we are going to be using as mentioned at the start Somerville, Archie Gray, Joel Pirro and uh, Jorginho Ruta are all going to be used throughout this rebuild so do not worry about them guys there's not a lot of money in the bank currently with 1 million pounds in trans budget and 15k in wage budget we have got a superstar which I'm going to be selling there he is Willie Nonto he does not want to be at Leeds in real life I don't think he's playing too much to be honest you can tell I'm a Manchester United fan from behind me I don't watch too much Leeds but I'm going to hold my bias away for this rebuild because you know what there is some superb wonder kids and I actually respect the project that currently is going on at Leeds. So please don't click off the video because I'm a United fan. It is going to be a very good Leeds rebuild. But I'm going to be selling Willie Nonto because I believe he's going to leave in real life. And hopefully we can get in the middle of this value of 20 to 25 million pounds for him, which would be a top class sale. So let's go ahead. January, let's see what we can do. We've got some tough games coming up. We've got Birmingham. This is the 1st of January. So we've still got to hopefully sack Wayne Rooney, uh, Cardiff, Preston and Norwich. And I'll bring you back just for that game against Bristol City. Well, hopefully, I've got some top-class January signings. So there it is. Willie Nonto has finally left Leeds United. He's got his dream that he so wished for in real life. He is out the door for £17.25 million, which is still fantastic profit for Leeds, having only signed him for 3.8 from Zurich a couple of seasons ago. It's a bit of a shame that it's not worked out at Leeds. And as you can see on FM, he's very, very highly rated. But to keep this rebuild semi-realistic rather than keeping him, as he's not going to be here in real life, I don't think, by the end of the January, we've decided to sell him and he's not the only player we have decided to sell as well. I've been looking in the rumour mill and it looks like Luke Ayling is also potentially leaving the club and I don't think he's a fantastic right back anyway. So for £1.3 million we've also sold Luke Ayling. He's 32 years of age and on some decent money. So we'll say goodbye to him and a slightly controversial sale of Darko Giabi has also happened. Now we were offered outrageous money for Brighton by this kid. £9.25 I know he's just been signed by Leeds for £5 million, but we've managed to get a very good offer. So not only is it £9.25 million, we've also got 50% of any future sale. And we've already got Archie Gray and James Shackleton and uh, Lewis Bay as all young central midfielders at the club. And to be honest, we could easily take this money and reinvest it right now. So a bit of a controversial one, but he is also at the door. And finally, Patrick Bamford has also been sold. Now for me, Patrick Bamford just is not good enough. He is going to be leaving the club as well. And again, 30 years of age. He's at the club on loan. We're back to hopefully try and sell in the summer, like a lot of players from Leeds did in the summer, like, you know, Brennan Aronson and all that lot. All absolutely going to be leaving the club in the summer as well. So do not worry about that, Leeds fans. First signing is Jeremy Injaki. You know, this guy is a right back for Watford after being at West Ham in the Premier League a few years ago. A simply very cheap backup right back, £1.3 million. And coming in to pretty much do a job of Luke Ayling, but he's only 23 years of age. He could do a better job as a wing back on attack, getting in, crossing the ball, and using that pace. So welcome in, Jeremy Injaki. Our first big signing is Juan Larios, 6.5 million pounds from Southampton, the Spanish left back from the Barcelona Academy. And then of course, moving to Manchester City, the classic Pep Guardiola poaching. Uh, this guy looks absolutely fantastic. Again, can play that wing back and attack role very, very well. Very quick, great dribbling, great crossing, very determined, and hopefully can be our superstar left back of the future. And our final signing and the person to replace Patrick Bamford and sort of rotate with Piro, with uh, Jorginho Ruta and Rocco Simic, is Rocco Simic, to be the third striker and the rotation rotational option. £9 million is what we paid for him. He is a five-star potential wonder kid. 16 determination, great pace, great finishing, and of course, six foot three as well. So an absolute man mounted. Now the tactic we are using is what I've called the best 4-2-3-1. I've used this in a few rebuilds coming up in the future uh, that are already recorded. So 
this tactic is unbelievable i'm gonna very quickly click through it now and you can see every single player instruction while i'm waffling on it is absolutely fantastic and if you want to absolutely dominate teams use this tactic it is brilliant we're going to use it for the whole of this rebuild and if you wanted to use that tactic you can pause it on any moment just there and you can get it from there it's all going to be available on the patreon which is just linked down below now it's going to be available with the rebuild files which i do have as a patreon exclusive so anyone that does support we're not the absolute legends on screen now thank you very very much that is also going to be down there with that so feel free to go ahead and pick that up and help support your boy out uh, the team we've locked in, the players we've locked in for this first sort of end of the season is going to be Juan Larios at left back. Archie Gray in this DM on support role. Sainz has got Somerville on the left side with Jorginho Ruta up front. I'm very excited to see how this team can get underway. We beat Birmingham 3-0. We beat Stevenage 3-2 in the third round of the uh, FA Cup and then also beat Blackburn 5-2 in the third fourth round which is fantastic lost to cardiff drew to preston and drew to norwich so not the greatest start but hopefully we can kick on from now and true a true challenge for the automatic promotion places 10 points is all it is from southampton to ourselves so let's see what we can do for season number one well we narrowly missed out on automatic promotion so we had to go through the playoffs we're in the first leg in the semi-finals against norwich we ended up drawing 2-2 before the second leg back at Allen Road, we dominated and won 4-1 in an absolutely convincing game, setting up a playoff final against Hull City. Well, there was no goal scored until the 111th minute when Jed Spence put Leeds 1-0 up. Now, I believe as I'm recording this, he's just been recalled by Spurs, which is a bit of a shame, but we move. Uh, Gruev is on the ball. We find Somerville. We find Rocco Simic in the 114th minute to make it 2-0. Hull are going to make a late comeback in the 1 119th minute with Aliar running through, Julia Furpo missing the challenge and Liam Delap putting them 2-1 behind but they couldn't get the equalising goal and we do go up in the playoff final in a, a game which we certainly deserve to as well much more XG, much more shots they had more possession but we were certainly the better side and we're going up in the championship with I believe it's Ipswich and Leicester it is indeed, we were very very close 92 points, Ipswich on 94, Southampton got 93 and did not get promoted they actually got knocked out by Hull who had just 74 points uh, the second half of this season was absolutely fantastic as you can imagine if we just quickly head to the schedule this uh, sort of spell of form we had in January was a uh, very much a blip we had a very very strong run as you can see from you know the playoff final all the way to the 13th of February losing just one game which was the FA Cup quarter final we lost 3-1 to Liverpool which I'm of course not too fussed about and obviously these stats are a little bit skew if because it only takes in the it's from the January the first rather than the first full bit of the season. So Dan James was fantastic with 15 goals in just 19 games, 14 goals in 19 for Ruta, 13 in uh, 13 starts for Joel Pira as well is fantastic. Now Archie Gray was locked into that DM role and he played 28 games, got four goals and seven assists. We know how good this kid could be in real life, and we're going to be tracking his progress throughout the course of this five years. I'm going to be checking out his stats. Uh, at the very end of the five years in the uh, development section where we see the progress of every single stat at the end the numbers here are simply ridiculous so make sure you're sticking out till then to see how good Archie Gray turns out uh, Stuart Dallas was very good he played lots of games in that right back role uh, four goals and nine assists Sean McGurk as well three goals and seven assists now forgive me again Leeds fans I'm not sure who this guy is he was in the under 21s when I first joined he looks absolutely fantastic and progressed very very well in this season was an absolute superstar in that cam roll for us. Juan Larios, two goals and six assists, a very successful signing. And Somerville must have picked up an injury because he played just 18 games, one goal and four assists. And not the greatest of starts, to be honest, just a 6.81 average rating. And one thing I've always found with Somerville is he is very, very quick, but he never really seems to develop his mentals or technicals quite as much as I would like him to. So my goal for this rebuild is going to be making him an absolute superstar. He's going to be locked in for the full five years as well as Archie Gray. Them two are guaranteed but hopefully going to lift a Premier League title with Somerville and Archie Gray in the side that is going to be the goal now in terms of money obviously we're back promoted to the Premier League so we've got 50 million pounds to spend and 
£443,000 in wage budget. But that really does not tell the whole story because as we head down into the under-21s or the under-18s where I put them all, there is a whole host of players here which I'll be looking to get rid of. Out of this list of Werber, Aronson, uh, Bamford, Lorente, Rocker, Cock, Harrison, and Sidney Nistera, I'm looking to sell every single one of them. The only person I'm looking to keep is Rasmus Christensen. This guy is a fantastic right back and has been playing in the Europa League and the Syria for Roma as a rotation option. I'm going to bring him back to Leeds as a Premier League right back. Hopefully that's going to go down well. He looks fantastic. He was great in the Premier League last season and looks like a top class player. And I don't believe I've seen anything about him slandering Leeds or anything. Whereas like Brendan Aronson has been an absolute you know you know what Leeds fans um so we're going to be selling players like that so season two for Leeds is going to be absolutely massive first time back in the Premier League since the relegation lots of money to go ahead and spend I think it's time to sign some wonder kids Quick fire outgoings. Mark Rocker has had the club to Al Nassar for 28 million Patrick Bamford's off to Bochum for 8 million Jack Harrison's got a loan to Aston Villa with a mandatory fee of 17.5. Glenn Kamara has been loaned to Sporting in Spain. Of course, we couldn't sell Brendan Aronson, but he's been loaned to Fortuna Dusseldorf with a £9 million optional future fee. Stuart Dallas has been loaned to RB Leipzig, which is a little bit controversial, but we have moved on from a player like Stuart Dallas. We couldn't sell Diego Lorente for anything, so we've loaned him out for 0% of his wages being paid, which is... Of course, an absolute hole in the pocket, but it is what it is. And finally, the board would not let me sell Luis Sinistero for anything less than £25 million, and no one was offering it, so I've loaned him to West Ham again with no one paying any of his wages, which is a little bit frustrating, but it is what it is. Now it's time to get into the fun bit. The signings we have made, and ladies and gentlemen, we have made some absolute bangers. And number one is Jeremy Sarmiento. This guy has just joined Ipswich on loan in the Championship and has been smashing it, I believe, at West Brom as well. He is a top-class talent, and on this year's FM, is one of the best wonder kids you can get. He's got 16 dribbling, fantastic pace, decent enough to have determination, but if you're not brand new to the channel, you know I love players of these two stats right here. Extremely consistent, and they love big matches. He's a little bit injury-prone, which we're going to have to work on, but Jeremy Sarmiento is going to be a top-class player here at Leeds. It was quite expensive at £20 million, but that's not the end of the world. He's already worth 50 million quid, so welcome in Jeremy Sarmiento for a measly 20 million quid. Dario Esugio is our second signing. This guy is a young Portuguese central defence midfielder. Signed for just £3 million, has been loaned out to Stoke, and again, he's going to come into the club and come into this little wonder kid conveyor about which we're going to create here at Leeds and hopefully in sort of two or three seasons time he's going to be part of the first team squad and be good enough in hopefully European football by the time we get there. Uh, signing number three is Micah Beeruf again another one similar to uh, Asugio 1.6 million pounds is all we paid to Arsenal. Uh, good enough little wonder kid here 21 years of age going to try and loan him out but it's been quite difficult to get everyone out on loan so Micah Beeruf might just be a squad player in the Premier League for this season. Michael Hamilton is another one of them, £750,000. I personally have never heard of this guy, but he's got five-star potential, extremely consistent, and signed from Man City for literally 750k. So an absolute bargain in Micah Hamilton. Uh, Samuel Lucero is a three million pound centre back who signed from Argentina. Another one we've brought in who's going to go out on loan, two and a half star ability, five-star potential. Pretty much one of the kids only so far. The first, well, the second player other than Sarmiento coming in to the first team is Mies Hilgers. This guy is from the FC20 Academy and is absolutely fantastic. Three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential ability. Consistent, loves a big match, great determination, great jump and reach and head in, which of course is very, very important for a centre back. And just signed for £13.5 million. And has got some lovely turkey teeth as well. So welcome in Mies Hilgers. And the last signing is another one in the Wonder Kid conveyor belt. Junior Zay for just, I believe, £7 million. £3.5 million. And loan back out to his parent club, Basel. Looks very, very good. Great flair, determination. A bit like Somerville with his fantastic pace and dribbling, but not a lot else. Hopefully, one of them becomes an absolute superstar. And of all of them signings, the team is looking like so. You can see it's not too different to actually what the Leeds team could look like in real life. We've got Elan Messier in goal, Christensen at right back with Hilgers and Pascal Stroik at centre back. Larios at left back with Ethan Ampadu and Archie Gray in 
and central defensive midfield together. Sarmiento on the right, Francisco Samville on the left, Joel Pirro in cam and Ruta up top. The backups are looking very strong as well with Carl Darlow, Jeremy and Jackia, Samuel Lechero, Charlie Creswell, Julia Firpo, Ilya Gruev, Lewis Bay, Dan James, Sam Greenwood, Micah Hamilton and Rocco Simic. The team looks very, very strong. I'm not expecting, you know, much beyond a mid-table finish with this Leeds team. There is a lot of young players in here as we sort of do it by the general info and look through their ages. There's not a lot of uh, well, the experience. You've got Carl Darlow at 33. Then you've got Furpo and Christiansen at 27. Dan James at 26. And after that, it's just 24 and under. But the potential is fantastic, as you can see here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players with five-star plus potential. We head into the under-21s. There's a lot of them here as well. We head into the under-18s, and there's a few of them in here as well. And the youth system here at Leeds is very, very good. Now, if we head to the club info, it shows only two-star youth recruitment, which, trust me, throughout this rebuild, we're going to see that basically show us as five-star. Four-star youth facilities, four-and-a-half-star training facilities is absolutely essential to making them wonder kids that come through top-class players. And how we're finding our wonder kids is for our recruitment focuses. Now, I showed these guys off to you in a video a few weeks back, but basically, I'm searching for 15 to 21 year olds all across the world in every single different continent and making sure I've got scouts which have the world knowledge that can go ahead and do it as well. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll try to remember to link it up there. I probably won't. It's been on the channel three or four weeks now. It's very, very clear what it is. It's a scouting guy. So feel free to go ahead and watch that one. Of course, this season, we are just in the Premier League, in the FA Cup and the Caraba Cup. Our season preview in the Premier League sets us down in 16th place. I'd like to do better than that. Let's aim for mid-table in our first season back in Premier League football. We have smashed it in the correct system with these current Leeds Wonder Kids and a few extra signings on top. We have got Leeds into seventh place in the Premier League league qualifying for the Europa Conference League which is absolutely brilliant and if Fulham didn't go ahead and win the FA Cup we'd have done even better and got into the Europa League so silver linings we're in Europe a 26 goal difference 17 wins 10 draws and 11 losses simply a fantastic season for us here at Leeds in the Cups we were absolutely useless but I couldn't care less we are in European football in just what will be season number three which is absolutely outrageous this season we locked in a few players Rocco Simic for the end of the season uh, Sarmiento Somerville as the wingers Larios as the winger a wing back and Archie Gray in there but the real stand-up performer this year was Joel Pirro he was superb in that striker role 19 goals and three assists and this guy looks like an absolute demon he's six foot one 16 finishing not the quickest of geezers but we'll score you a whole ton of goals do not leave him behind if you are doing a Leeds uh, save because this guy is absolutely fantastic sell Willie Nonto and you someone that actually wants to be here a fantastic first season in the Premier League obviously joined from Swansea uh, just in the summer just gone so a fantastic signing for Leeds and looks to be doing really well in real life as well uh, Georgini Ruta was sort of the bit part player to him playing games in cam off the wings but mainly as a backup to Joel uh, Perot 20 starts 14 on the bench 9 goals and 2 assists just a 6.68 average rating is a little bit worrying for Ruta. Hopefully, you're going to have a better next season. But if not, he might have to be shown the door, which is a bit of a shame. But it's not the end of the world because we've got some players that are progressing far beyond that. Sides to go Somerville with 41 starts this season. Six goals and three assists, sort of showing what I hoped. He is slowly progressing in the technicals and mentals of more and more game time. And he is going to become a superstar this season. 6.71 average rating isn't fantastic, but he's getting there. And I believe in Somerville. Uh, Archie Gray this season, again, just you know levels on levels a value of 81 million pounds 37 starts two goals and four assists in that dm role is absolutely fantastic but the superstars this season were joel Pirro and uh, actually dan james with 10 goals and six assists in 26 start and maybe a little bit of a uh a hidden player to, to keep an eye on. Big DJ could become not only a Leeds superstar, but a Welsh superstar as well. So uh, as a United fan, I do not mind Lee, uh, Dan James at all. I quite like him, in fact. And uh, Ilham Esliye is obviously our goalkeeper pretty much for this whole rebuild. Very, very good season, 7.04. Christensen, 36 games, 9 assists. Very, very good. And even Sam Greenwood with 18 starts, 4 goals and 6 assists. Playing a lot of games in the cam role for us. Uh, he was absolutely fantastic. A 7.07 .07 average rating. So again, Maybe someone I didn't expect to be a superstar, but could turn into one of the best players at this club. Now, in terms of the development center, we have had some superstars come through the academy, ladies and gentlemen. Roy Burchill. This guy 
Could be anything he wants to be. 16 determination, 18 work rate, and 14 natural fitness is a fantastic start for a wonder kid. He can also play in central midfield, central defensive midfield, left mid, or striker. And when I was looking at this guy to, you know, actually develop him into something, he really could pretty much do any of them roles. I ended up settling on training him into the DM role uh, as a DM on support. Now, the only reason that I sort of was against this is passing is only eight. So we've also set up so we train his passing as well. But as a striker, he looks like he could pretty much do it with good enough composure finishing. He's just not very quick. Uh, as a central midfielder, he is just absolutely superb. And I think he's going to become one of the best players in this team by the end of this three build. He looks fantastic and hopefully we can progress him into being that way as well. Uh, the loans we sent out were also fairly successful. Uh, if we look through the average ratings of them, Glenn Kavara had a very good season. So hopefully we can get some good resale value on him. Same as Lorente and Sinistera. I'm sort of hoping now they've gone out and actually had good loans, we can sell them for decent money. Uh, Dario Asugio with 34 games in the championship is great for his development. Diego Montero is a wonder kid here at uh, Leeds as well. We've loaned him out to Wrexham where he played 30 games, which is very good. Uh, Sean McGurk, who we sort of touched on in the season number one, was uh, very good for Middlesbrough this season in the championship, played 50 games. Uh, he's obviously a League One slash championship level player, and uh, he's not going to be making the seventh Premier League, but certainly a good player for anyone around that sort of level. Uh, Joe Goldhart with 41 games for Derby as well, and uh, Junior Zay, who we sent back to Basel for some reason because he never played a game there again, which is a uh, very, very frustrating. Uh, but season number three, £83 million in the bank, £145,000 in wages. Now, I could go up to the outrageous and go ahead and sign some stupid wonder kids, which I will do a little bit of, but we're going to be looking to also just make the club a lot more financially secure. Now, obviously, in the early 2000s, Leeds were struck by financial issues, and it took them a long time to recover from that. So I don't want to just plummet them into, you know, unnecessary debt, etc. So we're looking to do this quite cleverly as well. There's £111 million in the bank as we speak no debt it would be seriously impressive to mess leads up from here so hopefully we can just keep the little wonder kid sort of conveyor belt going on sign some fantastic players and i reckon from the start we've had take leads the champions in the first five seasons of this rebuild so let's get into season three and check out the new signings and sign number one is the cover star Tommaso Baldazzini. he is consistent he loves a big match and is an Italian wonder kid in cam he has got fantastic dribbling finishing first touch determination off the ball vision technique and pace and is the real deal signed for Empoli for just 16.75 million already a value of 72 million an absolute bargain and is going to be an absolute game changer this team to Maso Baldazzini is going to lock in that cam role. And if he doesn't, we've brought in Tom Bischoff to be his backup in cam. Signed from Hoffenheim, a signing of just £15.5 million. Could be an absolute superstar. Could fall under the back up to a other superstar and never really progress so we'll see what happens with big tommy bischoff uh, santiago beltran is a goalkeeper who assigned to be the backup to Ilya mezier throughout this rebuild again similar to tom bischoff might you know big play the to play the play the bit part role would never really grow and just be there but here he is as a good backup goalkeeper and again if you guys are looking for wonder kids these are all on your game so go ahead and feel free to go ahead and sign them they are all fantastic one player that is smashing it in real life and there's a lot of talk around this man is antonio noosa this guy's a norwegian winger for club bruges and looks absolutely fantastic he's got great pace dribbling finishing and determination and could potentially be the answer to Somerville not doing his best. He is going to be pushing Somerville to the limit. He's already got the technicals and mentals, in my opinion. He's just not as quick. So maybe they're the perfect partner to work off of each other. He's extremely consistent. And again, a value already of £54 million and signed for just 22 So an absolute bargain. Uh, Tien Den Bogende is a player I signed a lot in real wheels because he's very, very cheap. I don't know why I keep signing him because I never managed to progress him very well, which surprises me because he's extremely consistent. 14 determination, great jump and reach, 16 finishing and 16 composure. But I couldn't tell you a time I've ever managed to get him good. He signed him for just £6.75 million, but who knows why I can never get this guy good. Have you guys ever got him good? Let me know down below. Uh, but we've signed him and hopefully this is the rebuild where he proves me wrong and becomes an absolute superstar. Uh, Devin Wrench is the next signing. It is an expensive one for £32 million and we'll go through the outgoings in just a second so it makes more sense because there's a right back that has led the club for 
pretty much the exact same money. Uh, he's fantastic, obviously, from the Ajax Youth Academy. Great determination, can go forward very well, and is also very good defensively. Can also fill in a centre back if needed. So, a bit of a jury and timber regen in himself. And the backup to him is Ang Alexandra Pantrea. This guy is a Romanian right back signed from the uh, Stad Bucharest. Uh, he is absolutely fantastic and signed for a bargain fee of just £1.6 million. Pounds. So, welcome in big Alexandru as well. We're not quite done as a late deal to sign Levi Colville. What happened? He's got 17 composure, unbelievable pace. Do I need to say anything about this guy? Probably not. Now, he's not broke through as Chelsea like he has in real life, which is a bit of a shock, to be honest. He was alone at Burnley last season and was absolutely fantastic. And, of course, is ready for the step up to Premier League football. He's playing it right now in real life and is an absolute superstar. So we've signed him on loan and we'll see if at the end of the season we can bring him in. They wanted me to ban an optional fee of around £100 million. So I said, no, of course, because his value is only 60. I'd bring him in for around 50 million quid. So at the end of the season, we'll see how he does and he may become our superstar centre-back for the whole of this rebuild, but a very clever loan signing. And as a striker to be from Chelsea as well as Armando Broja. Now, I am a massive advocate of this guy on Football Manager. He's 23 years of age. He is heavily, heavily overlooked. But actually, if you look in the editor pre-game, he's got one of the highest potential abilities on the game. He's got fantastic finishing, composure, pace, and acceleration. And just seems to always hit it in simulations, but I never hear anyone ever talk about him. So Armando Broge was going to come in and show you guys what an absolute superstar he could be. And the last signing for £8.5 million is Gabriel Moscardo. I believe this guy's just signed for PSG in real life as well. So £8.5 million. We'll sign him before we can never see him again. Uh, he's very consistent, five-star potential Brazilian wonder kid. Absolutely fantastic. Now, in terms of outgoings, you can see here £102 million. Now, now, 31 million pounds that was Rasmus Christensen, 13 for Max Werber, 18 for Jack Harrison, three and a half for Sean McGurk to Palmer, uh, 3.8 for Diego Lorente, and just underneath my head here, Sinistera. So for 27 million to Al Halal. So we've done a very good job of rather than selling them all for stupidly cheap last season, loaning them again, letting them get some value and selling them for lots and lots of money. Uh, there was no other sales in this bit. You can see I'm consistently loaning players out and doing the whole rigmarole of uh, what you should be doing when you're buying a foot manager, developing wonder kids and selling the older players. Out on loan this season, we've got Lechero, uh, Jeremiah, uh, Michael Hamilton, Sally Perkins, Georgina Ruta, uh, Hjelde, Biruf, Bate, Greenwood, Aronson and Gildhart. I still can't sell. Brendan Aronson is an absolute impossible task to get rid of that guy. So uh, he's still here, stealing a living, but going out alone in the Bundesliga constantly and dropping 5.4s like he does in real life, which is fantastic. Uh, we're back in the 4 2 3 1 again. The team is looking very, very strong. We've got Meslier in goal, Wrench, Stroik, Hilgers, Larios, Ampadu, Gray, Somerville, Barazzini, Sarmiento, and Armando Brogia. We've now got a 15 man squad as we are in Europe. So Beltran, Pantea, Creswell, Colville, Furpo, Moscardo, Gruev, Nosa, Bischoff, Dan James, and Joel Pirro with the four sort of uh, youngsters slash um, homegrown status fillers as Carl Darlow, Roy Burchill, Junior Zay, and uh, Tio Den Bogende. Hopefully still learning out Rocco Simic, Dario Sergio, and Diego Montiero. Season three is going to be tough. We obviously overachieved massively last season. We predicted to come in 16th and got into Europe. This season predicted to come in 14th and we're in Europe. So I would now expect us to sort of drop off just a little bit maybe win the Europa Conference League let's see what we can do for season three well, this team continues to amaze me. We have lifted the FA Cup trophy for just the second time in Leeds' career. Larios with the first goal. John McGinn on the right-hand side for Aston Villa finds Matty Cash, who finds Kamara, who blasts at home to make it 1-0 in the 68th minute, but we were not done there. Pascal Stroke with a throw in the 82nd, finds Baldazzini back to Stroke, whips it in, and Somerville... We were having little doubts about him, but he's come up with a clutch goal there and lifted the FA Cup for Leeds United. But that is not the only success of this season as we have managed to secure Champions League football for season number four. And that's because we've come fifth in the Premier League on 64 points which just one point less would get us down an eighth and just two points less would have us ninth. A ridiculously tight season where just 64 points got you in here. 
69 points got you third place in the Premier League. An unbelievable Premier League season, this one. Arsenal in the league on 82 points. Now back-to-back -back titles for Arsenal, obviously, with us starting in the January of up-to-date uh, results. Arsenal are absolutely smashing it. So interesting to see what it predicts will happen from the real-life scenarios. Uh, Armando Brozier, you can see here, was outstanding. We'll go for the individual, individual player stats in just a second. But as a team, I want to show you, we are very, very good. We are the second most goal scored and the most shots for, which makes us exciting to watch. We're only the sixth best team on goals conceded as well. We're just 44 conceded. We don't hold the ball. We just all out attack, which I absolutely love. And I think Leeds fans would love as well. Now, in terms of goals, Brozier scored 30 goals and got three assists. I keep sticking this guy's prayers. He is absolutely fantastic. Give him a chance. Let him absolutely dominate. He is absolutely fantastic. Jeremy Sarmiento this season with 11 goals and 9 assists is great. Somerville with 11 goals and 5 assists. And finally becoming a superstar player is brilliant. He is now a 3.5 star player. Value of £62 million. And I think now he's going to become that next level player that he could be. And he's not the only one as well that has progressed very well this season. Tommaso Balazzini is a superstar. Seven goals, 16 assists, and a 7.21 average rating he was absolutely fantastic and the amount of yellows on this screen is scary he's consistent he loves a big match and if you guys are playing a save this is release clause i believe just go and activate it he is fantastic he is an absolute superstar dan james again this season proven to be a fantastic bench option seven goals two assists in 13 starts third of the bench is great hilgers with six goals with that fantastic jump and reach and joel perot sadly this season has become the backup to brosia and uh wants to leave because we locked brosia in as a starting striker Fair enough. He scored four goals for the bench and was okay. Uh, Noosa, three goals is good. And Badu, lots of starts and being fantastic. Archie Gray, 12 assists and 43 starts. A little sneak peek at his stats. He is growing very well. He's now made it England debut as well and is simply fantastic. I wonder if he's heading to the 2026 World Cup. I'm not sure if there's a way we can see that. If we go to England, can we see it? I hope so. That would be absolutely awesome. Is he going? Archie Gray, is he on the list? Is he on the plane? I don't think he is, is he? He's not. Heartbreak for Archie Gray. But Levi Colville is... And he was fantastic this season. 42 games, a goal and assist. And that value, we can definitely afford that. So expect to see Levo Colville enter the club very, very shortly. Next season, I don't know what we should be aiming for because we've just got Champions League football. Let's win it. I mean, we, we probably won't win it, let's be honest. Uh, Finances-wise, we are going down, but back up to 70 million, which is good. Maybe we need to be a little bit less spendy-spendy on transfers. I mean, we have spent around 170 million in two and a half seasons which is a lot but also not too bad considering we've sold 170 million so i'm actually quite happy with what we've done so far i think it's just the life of being a top premier league club maybe a few sales underway maybe finally getting rid of brendan aronson and of course bringing in more and more wonder kids and maybe lifting another european trophy actually we're not going to be doing that we didn't lift any european trophy uh we lost to brand in the fourth qualifying round so rubbish ignore that all right conference league is pointless champions league is our aim and what to help us get to the champions league is going to be the 47 million pound signing of levi colville now this guy like i said was fantastic last season that value was simply too good to turn down since signing him he's already got up to 86 million pounds it's an absolute no-brainer and i can't believe chelsea won't give him a chance superstar wonder kid levi colville is here we've signed our first regen as well for 2.8 million pounds uh, from estigal in iran now this is using the scouting techniques we've signed him for 2.8 million pounds and at season five sneak peek he's going to win the next gen award that's how good this guy is. Is he going to be part of our team? You'll have to wait and see. Uh, great stamina, great determination, decisions, teamwork, etc. £2.8 million. Pounds. Wonder Kid signing in. And a big signing of £24 million. Pounds. And the last signing of this window is Hugo Larson. This guy starts off the career at Eintracht Frankfurt. It's moved to Southampton in this save. But they were relegated last season. A relegation release clause of £24 million. Pounds. So we picked him up. Consistent. Loves a big match. Fantastic DM to sit next to Archie Gray. He's six foot two and a bit of a destroyer, but can also play football, which is great to see. And we've got him for an absolute bargain fee as well. Had a great season in the Premier League this season in a very struggling 
Sterling side have picked him up for eight and a half million pounds less than they signed him for. So very good business from us. Our team is looking very strong, as you can imagine. Meslier in goal, Wrench, Hilgers, Colville, Larios, Gray, Larson, Somerville, Sarmiento, Valdezini, Ambrosia. Uh, Beltran in goal, Travisos, Stroik, uh, Bojan, Kovacek. Have we missing a few signings here? Let me have a quick look. There is a few signings I've missed, just two. Diego Travasos has come into the club. Very, very cheap one. The kid from Sporting, £2.5 million to be a backup right back. And uh, Kovacevic, who I've just shown you for £5 million quid from Serbia, from Chikarajki. Looks very, very good as well. Very good centre back and is a backup centre back. Back to the tactic. And uh, we've got uh, Furpo as the backup left back. Uh, Moscardo, Ampadu, Dan James, Tom Bischoff, Antonio Nusa, Tio Den Bugende, Lucero, Sonny Perkins, Roy Burchill, Rocco Simic, and Junior. A Roy Birchill was progressing very, very well. Hopefully, he can become a superstar for us. Uh, we've still got Georginia Ruta here, Greenwood, Aronson, Montero consistently trying to sell them all. Very, very difficult to sell. Uh, I believe we've had another Wonder Kid come through. We have his hopefully future DM partner for anyone that picks a save up on Patreon, Dylan Ellis, a Welsh CDM, 35 million pound value. He's brave, great teamwork. He's five foot six. To me, he seems perfectly Welsh. So, Dylan Ellis and uh, Tom Burchill could be a fantastic CDM partnership. Obviously, this season, we're in the competitions of Champions League, FA Cup, Community Shields, obviously won the FA Cup last year, Carabao Cup and Premier League. A lot of games to play. I have got no doubt we're going to get Champions League football again next season. And that is exactly what we went ahead and done while also giving ourselves a very strong account in the Champions League, getting knocked out in the round of 16 by Real Madrid. Very happy with that. FA Cup knocked out in the third round. We're disappointing given we're on a, uh, what was it, uh, like a protecting your trophy, something like that. Carabao Cup, we got to the semi-finals and knocked out by Liverpool. We won the Community Shield, which is fantastic. And in the league, we come fifth on 68 points, but qualifying for the Champions League as well as Everyone else qualifying for Europe as well. Basically, half the league is in Europe now. Armando Brogia was 16 goals this season. Second place in that uh, qualifying list for the, the top golden boot behind Jao Pedro is frustrating. Second place again. Uh, 14 goals and 13 for Baldazzini. 9 and 3 for Sarmiento. 8 and 8 for Noosa is fantastic. Somerville, 6 and 9. Mm, a little bit of a drop off and... Again, he's just not quite progressing to that next level, as I always say. But he's here now, and he's let's stay locked in for five seasons. I mean, so far for Leeds, throughout his career, uh, well, for everyone pretty much, but basically just Leeds, if we can do this, about 20 goals and about 15 assists in 100-ish games isn't fantastic, let's be honest. So maybe if you're doing a lead save, Forget about Somerville. He's not as good as he is on FM as he is in real life. Uh, Colville was great this season and is an absolute superstar. And uh, obviously the superstar we are all interested in, Archie Gray, has now had three caps for England and is an absolute superstar. Is uh, ridiculous. Wants a brand new contract. Guess what, Archie? Have what you want. A value of £92 million. Again, if you're doing a Leeds career, which I imagine a lot of you are if you are watching this video, there is a lot of players here you can certainly be using. Meslier, keep him around. Uh, Archie Gray, use him. Somerville can be a fantastic squad player. Uh, in terms of Pascal Stroik, another fantastic squad player. Furpo played 33 games this season and have Juan Larios in season four. Use him, he's great. Ampadu, 42 games as a centre back or a CDM. He can do both, he's brilliant. Uh, Dan James, 38 games, including bench games in season four, certainly can be used. And Sonny Perkins certainly deserves a shout out as well. Played 17 games overall this season, but I believe it was last season, uh, or, or possibly in the season to come, maybe, uh, or maybe this season here, we scored two goals and got three assists in the Premier League. I didn't really touch on him. He's fantastic as well. Certainly someone to keep an eye out for if you are doing a lead save. And as I've said, we've been basically signing players and loaning them out this whole time. We are developing a very, very strong club. Lots and lots of wonder kids. Lots and lots of money in the bank, which is good again. £101 million. It helps qualifying for the Champions League, of course. And we are also improving these as we go as well. So the recruitment has gone up slightly, as has the youth facilities. Now 4.3 million social media followers as well. That's gone up a hell of a lot, which is something to keep an eye on of course of course lots of money to spend 90 million 30k in wage budget we now need to take the next step it is season five if we want to win the league we need to make some big signings and they really don't come much bigger than brand new barcelona superstar 
Vitor Roque, this guy is unbelievable on a football manager. And Barcelona have played him in a bit part role since he joined the club for £25 million from Atletico Paranaense. Of course, being a Barcelona, his value it has basically doubled at £50 million. So we've gone ahead and signed him to uh, compete with Armando Brogel. So we've pretty much got the two best Wonder Kids strikers here at the club. He's consistent. He loves big matches. Freestyle current ability, I guarantee you he's better than that. He's got a £99 million value and he's going to be simply outrageous this season. I'm telling you right now. So Vitor Roque is in at the club. Uh, backup centre-back is Kostas Kuliriakaris, a Greek centre-back signed from PAOK. Signing a different player that I've never really seen before. Obviously, Vitor Roque, everyone's in. I'll try and give you someone different. This guy looks brilliant. 27 caps for Greece. He's got 15 heading, 12 marking, 12 tackling. Great strength, great pace, and looks absolutely brilliant. So welcome, big Kostas, into the club. And an absolute superstar that I've signed. It's basically a Lionel Messi regen. It is Ezekiel Fernandez. This guy's been signed from the Velez Academy in Argentina. He's got 16 acceleration, ridiculous pace, 19 agility, can dribble, can cross, can finish. Great first touch. Great technique, five foot nine, looks brilliant. Signed for just 5.7 million pounds. Of course, he's got five star potential. I wish I had the editor enabled because I'd actually look what this guy's PA is, but I actually can't, which is a shame. He looks absolutely outrageous and uh, hopefully he is going to be a superstar for anyone that picks us up on Patreon and of course for this season as well. That is all we did in terms of signings, in terms of sales. Uh, we sold Pascal Stroke for £33 million to Wolves. We sold Ilya Gruev for £22 million to Al Nassar. Joe Goldhart left to uh, Middlesbrough for £7 million. Alexandra Pantay, who never really developed and sold for £1.5 million. And again, a whole host of low knees going out of the club as well. And again, the squad, as we run through it, looks very strong. Meslier, Wrench, Kovacevic, Colville. Uh, Salah Maradi is going to be our starting left back, the guy we signed last season. Larson, Archie Gray, Somerville, Noosa, Baldazzini, Vitor Roque, Beltran, Walters, Hilgers, Kulirakaris, Larios, Moscato, Ampadu, Fernandez, Tom Bischoff, Jeremy Sarmiento, Armando Brogia, Samuel Aquero, Sonny Perkins, Roy Burchill, Tian Den Bagende. That is a big old good squad. Still some players looking to leave the club. Dan James is going to Fenerbahce for 10 million pounds. Ruta is finally leaving for 10 million quid as well. I wish it turned out different, but he just didn't really hit the ground running for us and he hasn't really for anyone else either, which is a bit of a shame because this guy in real life is fantastic. Season five, it'll be great to see if we can win the Premier League. If not, it's not the end of the world. I have titled this we're going to win the Premier League. I hope we're in season five, but if we don't, it's been a good run. Two years in the Champions League, we'll take it. Well, I take it all back. I don't even need to title you in now. We've won the league. We've actually done it. And then one of the lowest point scoring seasons the Premier League might have ever seen. 75 points was enough to win the Premier League this season. And we have seen the Premier League be extremely tight throughout this entire rebuild. We qualified for the Champions League with just 64 points a few seasons ago. And this season on 75, we have won the league. Two ahead of Arsenal and Manchester United. Five ahead of Manchester City and Haaland only scoring 18 goals. Vitor Roque with uh, 16 goals in second place is fantastic. I'm a little bit dumbfounded as to how this has happened and it looks like as well i look through the schedule as we're coming up to this we tried to bottle it in the last game of the season against sheffield united who i believe are a, a bit of a rivalry between leeds and sheffield united we lost 3-0 the last day of the season to him which is an absolute shame but that wasn't the end of the world so we have won the premier league which is a massive massive success and i'm absolutely buzzing by that of course but I think I need to tell you guys, we took it one step further than just winning the Premier League in this rebuild. We gave Leeds their first ever Champions League as well in a 95th minute goal and an Armando Brogia goal as well. In the 95th minute against Real Madrid, we won the Champions League, which is actually mental and we actually dominated as well. We had a better XG, more shots, more on target and the team that went out there and did it was Meslier in goal, Hilgers at right back, Salah Muradi at left back, Colville and Ampadu at centre back, Gray, Larson and DM, Somerville right wing, Sarmiento left wing, Baldazzini in cam and Vitor Roque up front. So Somerville and Gray and Meslier and Ampadu actually all started in a Champions League final for Leeds where they won it. And they were all massive parts in the Premier League season where Leeds won the title as well. What 
a rebuild, I have to say. I mean, a quick breakdown of how players actually did this season. Vitor Roque, 21 goals, 7 assists. Baldazzini, 12 and 17. Somerville, 12 and 11. And a fantastic last season. It's exactly what we needed from him to go to that next level. His stats aren't showing it, but he's performing like it. And that is what matters. And the most important player we need to touch on is Archie Gray. Now, this guy's been locked in this team for this whole time. He has played 153 games, got 9 goals, and got 20 assists but most importantly let's have a look at this guy's progress if we fret the attributes out all time look at that progression plus four leadership plus three vision plus twos across the boards everywhere there plus three concentration his physicals have all gone up a whole bunch his strength plus four this man can become anything you want him to do in midfield get him use him if you're doing a lead save he is simply ridiculous. That is the league rebuild. We won the Champions League. We won the Premier League. We won the FA Cup in four and a half seasons as Leeds manager. It's simple. Get Kempi in and good things happen. If the first rebuild you have watched on this channel is this one, there is lots more in a playlist down there. So feel free to go ahead and watch them ones.